Hello, it's Don Webb, Scottish Sci Fi.co.uk, Scottish Sci Fi.com, Scotch Scotch Sci -fi .com, blah, 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 blah. Follow me on Twitter, DVD Blog, Friendly, Facebook y, Tip Like, Subscribe, and all that good stuff. Hello, it's lockdown week. Insert number here. Five. Can't remember. Five. Must be five. 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 Um. 26 April. I'm running really behind on posting these, but you know, it'll catch up. It'll catch up. You're probably seeing this in June. But anyway, um, it is 26 of April today. And it's week five. And so it's uh, opening in the bottle day and doing some other stuff as well because it's Sunday and it's sunny. And this is probably the last day of it being sunny for a while. Um, so uh, just want to make most of it, innit? Right. So without further rubbish, um, let's go for. Uh, reviewing Summit and opening the new bottle. I'm doing this about out of sequence just to do with stuff. It becomes obvious when you know what you're doing, but I don't. So <laughs> whatever. Anyway, what we are doing for this one is um, Tamna Rollin. Um, temp 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 cask, which I can't pronounce. temp temp cask. It's a wine cask. Italian? Sounds Italian. Uh, it's an Italian wine cask from Tempranillo. This has been going down well. Um, and hence I thought I'd just talk about it for a minute. Um, because it's it's rather good. I mean, Tom the Bullion isn't one. Have I already done this? I've just got that sudden flashback. Have I already done this? I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure I haven't. If I have, that's a sign that it's getting to me. That's a sign that lockdown is definitely getting to me. If I've done this before, I, I don't think I have. I've definitely talked about it before. Because I used this in the tasting a while back for the uh, wine finish tasting. I did the uh, um, Bristol whiskey, which you should say. And um, yeah, and the reason I did this is because I tried, I'm sure I've done this before now. Um, I tried it at a airport, um, Edinburgh airport. A wee while back, um, Edinburgh, yeah, of course it is. Uh, Edinburgh Airport. As I was going through, um, and it was really quite nice, so I bought a bottle. Um, it's a big bottle, uh, it's a litre bottle because this is a duty free exclusive, and so I feel a bit guilty in actually even showing this. What with all the planes grounded, but what have you, uh, when it comes back, when flight returns to normal, and all that jazz, Morgan staring at me, then um, maybe get yourself something like this if you like what I say about it. It's not expensive. It's like £37 for a litre. So it's not expensive. It's non-age statement. It's 40% ABV. It's definitely going to be chill filtered. It's probably got calorin in it. It's Tamnavolin, which isn't one of the distilleries high up on my list of, God, that's a good distillery um, kind of list. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're means to an end. And most of their means to an end has been whiskey going into blends and stuff like that. They're a part of the White and Mackay group. And hence the majority of their malt goes into their blends. Um, Speyside, single malt, um, started to do more official bottlings recently, so you'll see a few of theirs at Tesco's, you know, their double oak and their sherry cask uh, finish and all that, and this one is the tempera Tempranillo cask finish, which is exclusive to airports. Okay, so what is it about this that's so nice? Let me tell you. It's incredibly fruity. <laughs> it really is. It's just, it's a massive fruit bomb. It's got lots of red fruits. If you like your wine cast stuff, and I do, I'm an idiot for that. I know, I know I'm an idiot for that. And I apologise profusely, but I like it. What can you do? Other people like it too. Anyway. Um, lots of red berries. Lots of that grapey kind of good red fruitish, jammy lusciousness that kind of stuff and behind that you do have a lovely cereal rich whiskey you know it's, it's just it's just a really good red berry fruity jammy whiskey it smells lovely A little bit of spice, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of cinnamon, you know, all that kind of usual kind of stuff, but nicely balanced. And it's just that fruit, man. It's that, that really jammy, luscious orchard fruits. 
raspberry, blackberry, strawberry, all mushed in a nice big sweet sugary jam. And it just really ticks all those boxes. Palette. So compared to a lot of whiskies you'll try, it's incredibly light on the palate. It's not, it's not mouth coating like your non chill filtered whiskies or your higher strength ABV whiskies. It's actually quite simple on the palate as far as it's not overpowering. Um, and you know, you're gonna have those issues with it. Well, it's a bit, bit thin, thin. Something I wouldn't know about. It's a bit thin on the palate. It's not got a viscousy kind of texture. It's not got any of that. But for all that is lacking, it tastes really nice and it's easy drinking. This is a quaffing whiskey. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to say drink responsibly. <laughs> Drinks. Drink responsibly. So drink responsibly. But at the same time, this is a whiskey for drinking. And, uh, I don't want to make that sound like it's in a bad way, but it's one of those whiskies that is just ideal for kicking your boots off with at the end of a day and just sitting down, kicking back, pouring a tumbler of this. Not a, don't fill the tumbler. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about a fancy glass. You don't have to worry about sniffing and savouring. You can do that, though. It's equally, <laughs> equally able to be drank that way. But... You can also just go, mm. you know what, that's not bad. You can just do that with it as well. Okay. So flavor wise, rich, almost sherry focused in some ways. Still, like I said, very thin on the palate. Okay. So you're not going to, you're not going to, um, be overtly fulfilled or anything like that and I don't mean to make it sound bad because I really recommend it I think it's a great whiskey for drinking all right all the way through the experience in the mouth it's at a level you've got a constant flavor of rich sweetness underlaid with some lovely jammy fruits and just a beautiful easy level of sugar and spice and jammy fruit noise and that's what it's like it's not overtly complex it's simplex but it's drinkable it's a nice whiskey it's not but you know for, for for what you're paying you're getting a good return on the investment i mean you're not getting bloody something amazingly complex or anything like that let's keep it real but what you're getting is a very nice drink for an unaged statement it's not burning the back of your throat off you know it's just tastes good and it's drinkable and it's very very enjoyable i've probably said that too many times it's nice So, if you want a whiskey that's going to blow your socks off and give you hours of, com of contemplation and exploration and all that kind of malarkey, this ain't, this ain't it, this will give you a nice flavour to drink, it will give you a perfectly happy evening sitting in front of the telly, watching Summit, having a drink, and just, you know, it will give you more than, say, I hate to say names, but your average 12-year-old. Um, yeah, it will give you more than your average sort of 12-year-old Scotch. Um, and it's just really nice to drink. I really rate it. That's just me. Anyway, there you go. So that's that one.
I think it's really nice that I will. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, that's as simple as that. Anyway, we'll leave that. Right, we're going on to week five lockdown bottle opening. So this is, again, it's a bottle I've wanted to open. As with all lockdown bottles, the whole ethos of me doing this every week has been a bottle that I've wanted to open. I sat there, gathered dust, and, you know, I've gone, I'll open that one day, I'll open that one day. Uh, push it to one side. But now, in the current state of climate that we are in, who knows, tomorrow, that occasion, that thing may never come. So just open a bottle. So, week five's bottle um, is is just one of those. Um, and uh, it is Yamazaki 12-year-old. So, it's the, the most basic of the Yamazaki age statement whiskies. But I've been wanting to open one of these for ages. I've drank it plenty enough times. Uh, and, and I've really enjoyed it every time I've uh, drunk it. But... I've never opened a bottle myself and sat there and drank it. I've had the Yamazaki Distillers Edition, the one you get at Sainsbury's. I've had the Hakushu Distillers Edition, the one you have at Sainsbury's. But I've never opened the 12 year old. So here we go. Um, it's, I nearly threw that in the air then to catch it. I thought that's a bad idea. Um, right, so it's, uh, it's a 12 year old Yamazaki. It's 43% ABV. Uh, it's got lots of writing on the back, and I'm not going to read it all. So there you go. Um, this is obviously this is in the newer boxes. So the, the when they re-released it, I think a year or two ago, um, they change the box design every so often and all that rubbish. Um, and um, and yeah, here you go. Bottle looks the same. It's broken now. Anyway, let's crack on. It's a screw top. It's a screw top. That's convenient. Um, okay, glass. Screw top. And glug, 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 glug. All right, first impressions again. First impressions are all the impressions of it. Certainly not the one I will be. Um, all right, okay, please the um, just didn't end up behind the washing machine or anything crazy like that. Right, uh, so Yamazaki 12 year old, 43%. And Yamazaki is a single malt from Japan, it's Japanese whiskey. Um, and it's ridiculously too expensive, in my opinion. One of the reasons why it's been put on the back burner to open it, because it's like, that's a 90 quid to open. And uh, 90 quid 12 year old? Anyway, bloody Japanese whiskey, what are you gonna do? But instantly, it's rather nice. Um, and that's the problem, they do it well. Um, and now with the, the um, over, over popularity of Japanese whiskey, it's just going for silly, silly money. So, you know, um, this is uh, no no exception. Uh, the Yamazaki 12 is retails at around 19.95, if you can get it, because it all sells out whenever it comes out over it. And um, some online retailers tend to charge a lot more for it. I think the last time, actually, it might have been 120 in a lot of places. I lose track of the retail price of this thing. It was 90 when I got it, and that was like two years ago. So whatever it is now, it's probably higher, but that's just the nature of the game. Um, we can only hope that circumstances, things change, and people get a bit more realistic about the retail price of some of the whiskies. But it's not, let's be honest. Um, anyway, so, nose. Okay, beautifully rich. Got a fair little wallop of spice there. Um, rich apples, definitely. Quite a fair bit of spice, actually, but a different spice. Which is going to confuse the living rubbish out of me. Hold on. Um, a little bit woody, a little bit cedar wood, maybe? That kind of thing, cigar box, that's what it's reminding me of. Definitely apples, definitely pear, even a little bit estery in places. Sorry, <laughs> don't go too deep in with the nose, dear. Yeah, it's got quite a spicy edge to it, actually. But it's thoroughly pleasant, very, very beautiful. I mean, you know, you understand when you've got the, you know, you're doing the, uh, there's no comparison here, so, but as it's poured. Actually, that's really good. That just smells really good. That's so berries now. It's been airing a little bit. It's got 
That's the time I've in my way. Anyway, sorry, we'll, we'll jump back to this one. That actually smells really good, that time I've in there. So maybe this needs a time and a little bit of air. It is a fresh bottle, which is why I say, whenever you open a bottle, don't have first opinions on it. Wait, try it a few times over the space of a week, a little bit of air into that bottle. Let it sit in your glass for a while. Don't just pour it, drink it, and then go, mm, it's um, because chances are you will. Can't get over it at that time of will this. <laughs> Dear God, that was a bad pairing. I didn't really think of this, did I? Anyway, but this is rich. It's definitely richer. It's definitely more to it. There's a lot of floral going on now. Bit of like hay, bit of you know summer fields, that kind of thing. It's quite a summery whiskey. Definitely floral. Definitely spice. Perfectly fragrant and lovely to sniff. Wouldn't be a bad cologne or perfume, whatever you like. Um. Anyway, let's have a sip. It's really nice. That is really nice. In all fairness, see that that is where the Tamla Willing in this is miles apart. Now on the nose, Tamla Willing is amazing, um, but on the palate, it's very very uh, fine. Oh, what did I say? Thin. That word. Very thin on the palate. This is a lot thicker on the palate. Definitely more oils. Definitely more richness. Definitely more. Um, maturity coming through you know you get that just uh, where fruits are, are fresh and vibrant and younger whiskies are the, the more broiled and kind of um you know mushy and rich and overripe and full of full of full of flavor and this is where this is coming from so oh yeah bit of vanilla Lots of apple pie stuff going on, you know, cooked, reduced apple pie, lots of brown sugar, lots of, you know, even a bit of cinnamon sugar. And and the mouthfeel is more substantial than a 40 percenter. So, I mean, I don't know if this is non-chill filtered. I don't believe it is. I threw the bottle down the box, damn it, don't I? I don't believe it's uh, non-chill filtered or anything like that, but I might be wrong. <coughs> I don't believe it says anything like that on the bottle. No. Um, but yeah, really good. Really good. Bit of another, I'd, I'd wager to say it's a bit of another quaffer of a whiskey like the Tamla Villain. It's, it's, you know, you could sit there with a tumbler rather than a taster and just have a, have a night on it. Bit expensive to do that, but you know. It's where the, the thought comes in. Is it worth £90 a bottle? And I'm saying 90 It's probably 120 now. So so in all fairness, let's split the difference. Is it worth £110 a bottle? Well, is it? If you've got £110, I am. <laughs> Not now I am. I just spent it opening that fucking bottle. <clears throat> anyway, um, language. Anyway, good show. Right. Yeah, it's got a lot of flavour. In all fairness, it's got a lot of flavour. It's got an immaculate balance. It is very drinkable and it has got a level of complexity to it. And yeah, we'll have a more in-depth review of it next week. But um, my first impressions go, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Is it worth 100 quid, 110 quid? <sighs> is it worth that? If you have that money going spare and you want to try Japanese whiskey, um, you know, it's probably the, the most value you're going to get out of a Japanese bottle of whiskey. Um, it's, yeah, it's very nice, actually. Definitely for drinking. Definitely for drinking, though. Eh. 
If I had, I think far too much. If I had a hundred pounds, would I, a hundred and ten quid, I've got to do the maths on it. If I had a hundred and ten pounds, would I rather have one bottle of Yamazaki 12 or three litres of Tandavulin Tempranilla or something in between? Now that, see that is where the real debate comes in. Would I rather have three litres of Tandavulin Tempranilla, Tempranillo, cask, or one bottle of this? I'm gonna have to have a think about that. Maybe I'll answer it when I do the Yamasaki review. In the meantime, stay safe, stay inside, unless you have to go out, but try to stay inside. Be sensible. Don't go queuing for ice cream on the beach. Don't do it, you pillocks. Anyway, stay safe. Take care. Until next time. Uncomfortable silence. I'll find the flipping up. Bye.